It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and I'd like to welcome to the show Father Timothy Gallagher, here to talk about an interesting topic, overcoming spiritual discouragement. Thanks for being here, Father. Very happy to be here, Kyle. The book you've written on this topic taps into the wisdom and spiritual power of Venerable Bruno Lenteri. Who was Venerable Bruno Lenteri? He was a priest who lived 200 years ago in northern Italy. Very difficult times. It was the time of the French Revolution and the wars and persecutions that followed, and then the uneasy peace after the fall of Napoleon. And uh, he was faithful during that time, helped uh, great numbers of priests, laymen, and laywomen to remain faithful during that time. But as this book highlights, I'd say above all, He was a man who knew how in difficult circumstances to instill hope in others. He knew that place in our hearts that so easily gets discouraged. He knew how to approach it with reverence, with sensitivity, with love, and to instill a whole new sense of hope. And my hope is that this book uh, make that message available to people because, as you know, Kyle, there's a lot of discouragement around today. So I think this message gets increasingly contemporary. For sure. When did you first learn about him? When I first heard about the uh, community he founded, in which I joined, the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, I think it was just grace, but I was immediately fascinated by him. Did everything I could to learn all that I could about him. It meant learning various languages and so forth. Wound up doing my doctoral thesis on him, uh, eventually writing his biography. So he's been a deep part of my life for the 47 years since I entered our religious community. And how has really exploring his writings and his life had an effect on your faith? It's a beautiful thing to see someone in circumstances that are so similar to our own. Um, Not only a time in which the uh, church was under pressure and actually active persecution, a time of uh, great political and cultural upheaval. It was a time when the modern world as we know it uh, was strongly asserting itself against the the classic faith that had held people together for so long. And also a man who lived with uh, very difficult physical handicaps, eyes and uh, breathing and so forth, and um, was loving, faithful, fruitful, uh, close to the Lord in those times. He's a wonderful witness to the fact that uh, nothing need ever stop us from uh, living a faithful life with the Lord and the joy that that brings. So I'll just quote one thing. Mm -hmm. When I wrote his biography, we uh, placed as a title for it, Begin Again, The Life and Spiritual Legacy of Bruno Lanteri. But that title, Begin Again, as I'm sure you know, Kyle, from the book, it was one of the leitmotifs of his teaching. That is, there is nowhere you can ever have been in your spiritual life, nowhere where you can be now. Nothing you can ever have done that can ever stop you right now from simply in your heart turning to the Lord, sincerely asking his forgiveness if we need to ask that, knowing that he is the kind of father who is eager to give it, delights in giving it, to whom we give, as Venerable Bruno says, we give honor and joy when we ask his forgiveness, and then beginning again. And as he says, do it boldly, don't do it with hesitation, do it boldly, and if you need to, do it every day, and if you need to, do it every hour of every day, Mm -hmm. so that there is never a reason to be locked into discouragement. There is always a door forward, which is a beautiful message, and I've seen it help so many people. How would you define spiritual discouragement? Well, I think as Venerable Bruno uses it, it's uh, akin to the spiritual desolation that Ignatius of Loyola speaks about. Mm -hmm. So it would be when in the spiritual life, we feel like we failed the Lord and a heaviness comes into our heart. It gets hard to hope that we're ever really going to change. We hear these voices that say, look at you, you know, after all these years of living your life of faith, look at how poor your prayer is. Uh, Look at how self-centered you are. Look at how you fritter away time. Look at how you don't reach out in love to your family members or others in the way that you really could. And this deep space that I think, uh, Kyle, is there in every heart. You know how when people, uh, we meet people and they say, how are you? And we smile and say, "Uh, great. And how are you? Great. And that's socially appropriate. But in circumstances where we feel free 
to really recognize what's deep down in our hearts. I think there is a place in all of us that is afraid, that is uneasy, that feels that I'm less than I really ought to be. And that's the place that Venerable Bruno knows, and he knows how to touch with such love and sensitivity and say, no, you need never give in to discouragement there. There is always a way forward. And really, the whole of the book is uh, an effort to portray that way forward and to place that in the hands of people today. So that's the message. Yeah, begin again. Uh, don't ever give in to discouragement. Go forward. And all the tools are available to us for that. So you're saying that everybody deals with this? Well, uh, you know, if I were in front of a group, uh, as I often am these days, and I were to ask, this is the way I would preface the question, I don't want any show of hands here, but how many of us recognize that place in our hearts? And my guess is that interiorly, all of us do in some way. Certainly, I would say, Kyle, good people who love the Lord, for whom faith is real, who want to live a response to the gospel invitation of Jesus, because we are limited, to be human is to be limited in various ways, are going to feel that. And that's the kind of person to whom he is speaking. This is a person who loves the Lord, is trying, but feels his or her inadequacies. And I think for speaking to that audience, I think the answer is yes. You know, I've written a lot of books now, but this book gets a response that is different from all the others because people immediately recognize the space in their hearts. And this message of, uh, no, right there, there's hope, that really, really speaks to good people who love the Lord. So I imagine there's a balance because some of this seems like it would be a good thing for us to recognize our weaknesses and see that we have room for improvement would be a good thing and it could challenge us to become better and become more holy. So what's the balance between recognizing our weaknesses and maybe dwelling on them too much? This is another theme that runs throughout the entirety of this little book. And that is, uh, Venerable Bruno repeats over and over again that two things are necessary in order to grow in the spiritual life, humility and confidence, and neither apart from the other. So humility, that's what you're touching on, Kyle, right now, is yes, we do need to recognize our limitations and our weaknesses and our failures and bring that awareness to the Lord, but not in a heavy, negative, self-abasing, self-diminishing kind of way. That's not humility. Humility, you see, for example, in Mary, in her Magnificat, she's aware that the Lord has looked upon what she calls her low estate, but it thrills her with joy to see what God has done in that. Jesus speaks of himself as humble and lowly of heart. Humility in that rich biblical sense, it's the first beatitude, basically. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who know their limitations and their need for God, because for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's on the one side. And that does open the door to growth, but simultaneously and richly, always together with it, confidence in the infinite love and mercy and closeness and grace and power of God. When we have those two things together, then we go forward in truth and in hope, and we really make beautiful progress in the spiritual life. If anyone does read the book, he or she will see how repeatedly Venerable Bruno returns to these two things simultaneously, humility and as we look at ourselves, confidence as we look toward God. Is some of this a personality issue that some people would have more of a tendency to fall into discouragement than others based on their personality? Oh, yes, very much so. I mean, all of the living of the spiritual life is filtered through the individual nuances of each person. So Mm -hmm. each person's genetic makeup, uh, circumstances of family, growing up, life experiences, all of that shapes in all of us certain strengths and vulnerabilities. So yes, all of this would would, uh, pass through those individual nuances. But I would say, Kyle, I think that dealing with discouragement, I think that's universal in people who love the Lord. Universal in the sense, not that it's overwhelming, but that it's something that we all deal with. To say it in terms of Ignatius of Loyola, he understood it as normal in a healthy spiritual life, that there would be an alternation of times of what he calls spiritual consolation. When our hearts are warmed with hope and life and joy in the Lord, prayer is alive, God feels close. We all know those times and we rightfully treasure them, but that there would also be times of spiritual desolation when God would not feel close, when we would feel discouraged and disheartened and so on. The key thing 
is to be aware of those uh, fluctuating states and to know how to respond to them well. That's his whole teaching on uh, the discernment of spirits, his 14 rules. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think all of us do experience it at times. It, um, as I say, we each do that according to our individual nuances. Uh, and so a teaching that helps us on the more discouraging end of that, I think, is one of the greatest gifts. Because I think, Kyle, that for most good people, for most of the way on the spiritual journey, the real obstacle is precisely spiritual discouragement, or as Ignatius would say, spiritual desolation. And to be able to understand that and to know how to respond to that, I think, is one of the greatest gifts that our spiritual tradition can give us. And Venerable Bruno is simply one who portrays that to who brings that tradition to us in a very concrete and loving and uh, hope-inspiring way. So how much of spiritual discouragement is within our control? Well, the causes of it, you know, let's say the external circumstances, let's say we get a difficult report from a doctor or financial difficulties come up or a family member is suffering in a particular way. Those are not in our control. And also some of the interior things, you know, if we've been through uh, difficult circumstances in the past in life, those can be touched in various um, situations. So the various things that can originate the spiritual discouragement often are not in our control. But what is always in our freedom, in our control, is how we respond to them. And that's where Venerable Bruno is speaking. Mm -hmm. If we simply allow them to overwhelm us, life gets pretty dark. But if we know that there's a path through them, so that'll bring us through them safely and actually uh, with further growth, then an awful lot changes in the spiritual life. And that's the message uh, Venerable Bruno gives. You talk about recognizing the enemy even when he presents himself under the appearance of good. Can you give an example of this? This is a tactic the enemy can use and uh, something that Ignatius describes and Venerable Bruno also and that is, let's say, for example, a woman is doing wonderful work teaching in a high school, um, having a wonderful impact on um, the students, not only uh, professionally, but also through her witness and her life of faith, and then gets the thought, you know, maybe I could even do more for the Lord if I were to leave, let's say, what is a, uh, a reasonably well-to-do suburban high school and uh, serve more directly like Jesus in an inner city school for more disadvantaged people. All right, this is a, a woman who loves the Lord. Uh, a thought comes to her which is uplifting in her heart toward maybe what might be the next step mm -hmm. in growth toward the Lord. But there's a discernment that's needed here. Is that, in fact, the joy and the interest in this, uh, a sign that God is actually calling her to that step or might it also be that the enemy wants to disrupt the wonderful work that she's doing right now? Hmm. That's not an easy discernment. And Ignatius has a very careful uh, set of principles on how to deal with this sort of thing. It is helpful to be aware that sometimes spiritual energy of that kind, I would say generally, uh, should be discerned and not just immediately followed. So that would be an example of at least a possible illustration of this tactic of the enemy to engender energy toward a good thing, but a different good thing than God really wants of the person. There's so much that we haven't gotten into, including some practical ways of doing this. And you talk about a bunch of different things in your book. People are just going to have to check out the book to learn more about it. And I think it will really help them. So where can people get a copy of the book? Oh, just anywhere, uh, you know, through EWTN that published it, uh, Sophia, through, I have a website, which is just fathertimothygallagher.org. It's available there through Amazon, through any Catholic bookstore. So it's available through any channel in which books are available. All right. Again, it's called Overcoming Spiritual Discouragement, the Wisdom and Spiritual Power of Venerable Bruno Lanteri. Thank you so much, Father Timothy Gallagher. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle.